All right, the first thing is if you look at the general expression absolute value kind of in this form. So absolute value of uh, x minus b is equal to k. What this means is basically saying that the, uh, the distance between x and b is k. So that's kind of what the absolute value, the equation is expressing. And so if you were to look at this visually, what it's saying is on a number line, uh, if you think of B being located right in this spot, and if you think of this being the distance K in each direction, so here's a plus K and here's a minus K, so K in the negative direction. Uh, what it's saying is that in this specific relationship, X can either be here or here. Those are the two possibilities for x given that absolute value expression. Okay. And so really right here, this x is equal to b minus k. And this x would be equal to b plus k. And so it's kind of that, that relationship or that, uh, uh, that kind of uh, graphical relationship that helps drive kind of what the solutions or how to solve the equations for absolute value. And so let's take an example of an absolute value equation. All right, so really what you're saying in this or kind of the, the way that you would solve this is you would isolate your absolute value expression first. And that just means to put it alone on one side of the equation. Now, is there anything that we need to do to, to isolate this? The absolute value expression is everything that's inside the absolute value. So there's nothing being added outside. There's nothing being multiplied in front. And so this already meets that condition. It's completely isolated. All that's on the left side of the equation is the absolute value expression. And once you get to this step, what you're then going to do is you're going to split You're going to split this into equivalent equations okay, that are based on this kind of definition of absolute value. And the way that you split these is on each of the expressions or each of the equations, you're going to start with exactly what's inside your absolute value. So we're going to start with 8 minus 4x on each of these equations. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set 1 equal to the negative, the minus 12. And then the other one's going to be set equal to the positive of that, positive 12. And so then you're just going to solve each of these equations independently. And right now you guys have only really done linear equations, so it's just going to be a simple combination of terms, or isolate the variable, solve for the, the variable itself. So in this particular case, we could subtract an 8 from both sides, giving a negative 20, divide both sides by a negative 4, and you get one of your solutions to be 5. Okay, do the same thing with the other side, subtract an 8, leaving a negative 4x equals 4, divide by the negative 4, and solve, you get x is equal to negative 1. So these would be your two solutions. Okay, often in these, I'll ask you for the lesser solution and then the greater solution. I, I do expect that you can distinguish between those. The last thing that you do uh, need to make sure of is you need to check your answer. And there are, once you start getting into absolute values and uh, rational ex expressions where there's a variable in the denominator, you start to have what are called extraneous solutions. Extraneous solutions are just solutions that they work mathematically in the, in the solving of the problem, but when you plug, a back, plug them back in, they don't actually work in the uh, exact problem itself, only as a, a solution as you're working through the problem. Okay, so you do need to check your answers here. So if we test these back in here, 
So uh, 5 times a negative 4 is negative 20 plus an 8 gives you uh, negative 12. The absolute value of negative 12 is 12. So that one checks. And try with the negative 1. Uh, negative 1 times a negative 4 is positive 4 plus 8 is 12. The absolute value of 12 is 12. So again, that one checks as well. Okay, but do get into the habit of checking your answer if you are going to do these by hand. Okay, now, do you think you need to do these by hand? Not necessarily. You guys have powerful calculators. Okay, so you could also enter this in the solve feature of your calculator. A couple things to keep in mind on this. Uh, the vertical bars, and many of you, uh, despite the fact that I'm trying to point it out right now, will still make this mistake. Uh, this vertical bar is not an absolute value symbol. Remember, it's a with key. It means that you're going to evaluate the expression with whatever follows. Okay, the absolute value expression in order to uh, plug this in is going to be, again, we can use our solve feature. But to represent absolute value, we're going to use ABS. And then in parentheses, you're going to type in the entire expression. And so this is what it would look like when you type in this equation right here into your calculators. Okay, so if we uh, take a look at this, we hit the F2 algebra tab, choose solve. Okay, so ABS, you can either type it in. It's a relatively easy one to type in. Or you can find it under this math catalog key. The math key is second function 5. And it's, it brings up this math catalog. And then under the number, Selection, the next one down is ABS. You can, you can bring it up in that respect too. But So you can either alpha lock it and type ABS or you can find it in that math catalog. But once you type ABS, uh, write in the expression that's contained inside. So minus 4x, close off the parentheses. So there's my absolute value expression. Set it equal to 12 comma x to identify that's what I want to solve for. And now when you hit enter, you should see that 5 and negative 1 are your two solutions. And they confirm that you got it correct by hand as well. All right, so let's take a look at this, both the solving by hand and then also solving by calculator. So if we solve by hand, we isolate our absolute value expression, which is already done. Then we're going to split it. We get 2x plus 6 and 2x plus 6. Again, always start with the expression that's inside the absolute values. Set it equal to exactly what's there, the 4x, and then set it equal to the opposite of what's there, so minus 4x, and then look to solve each equation independently. So here, if I move all my x's, let's just say we move the x's to the right here. So subtract a 2x, we get 6 is equal to negative 6x. Divide by negative 6, we get x is equal to negative 1. So here's one possibility. Okay, do the same thing over here. We'll move everything to one side. We'll also move it to the right. We get 6 is equal to, in this case, um, 2x divided by 2. And we get x is equal to 3. So here's our three possibilities. Again, what we want to do is check to make sure that these work. So when we plug it in, okay, now do I even need to evaluate this to see what's going to happen here? When I plug in this negative 1, what happens to the right side of my equation? 4 times a negative 1 is a negative 4. Can you ever have the absolute value of something equal to a negative number? No. That's inconsistent, right? So this is what's called an extraneous solution. Right? It's a solution that it worked in the math of solving it, but when you plug it back in, it's inconsistent. So that is not considered one of the solutions. Now we can plug in the 3. So we get 2 times 3 is 6, plus 6 is 12. Absolute value of 12 is 12. And let's compare that to 4 times 3, which is 12. So that one is consistent, so it checks. Your only answer would be 3. Okay. All right, now if you're using your calculator, again, just use the F2 Algebra tab. Uh, type ABS. Again, this time I'm just going to alpha lock A, B are right next to each other and S is right down here. So it's a pretty simple combination of letters. And then type in the expression. 2x plus 6 is equal to 4x, comma x to tell the calculator that's what we want to solve for. And it gives us our one solution of 3.